Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Himmel. And the past few years, you may have set yourself a few goals that you thought you were gonna really stick to and you were gonna like make it happen. And naturally towards the end of the year, you know, we get excited, it's the holidays and it's like, it's really, it's a really exciting time. It's a good vibe, like it's inspiring, it's motivating at the moment. And so you're thinking, you know what, maybe there's a few things that I could do differently next year. You know, like I could set myself new goals, these new resolutions, but before you do that, right, before you do that so you can prevent what you just saw, there's a few things that we should try and do first. The first thing that we should do is we should reflect on the year that has passed. We need to see how effective we've been this year. And the reality is many of us don't do enough reflection. We think, oh, you know what? The new year's around the corner. Well, let's start focusing on that. And we forget about all the things that we've done in the previous year. And like, fair enough. Like why think about the old you when next year is gonna be brand new you? And you don't need to think about all these different things that you've done in the past that did or didn't work because you know what? It doesn't matter anymore it's in the past it's old it's gone wrong you need to think about it we can use the past to our advantage it's a really effective way for us to think and reflect on how effective we were in achieving our resolutions in achieving our goals and then see what we can do differently Here's how I'm gonna go about reflecting on my year. A few questions that I'm gonna be asking myself and I'm gonna be answering for the goals that I did accomplish are the following. How many of the goals that I set myself did I actually achieve? What allowed me to achieve them? How did I feel once I achieved those goals? And for the ones that I didn't achieve, what made it difficult to achieve this goal? Did I perhaps set too many goals? Was a goal too challenging for me? Asking yourself questions like this and like writing down your answers to them, like physically writing them down. I don't know what it is about writing, but it's just working like extremely well for a lot of people, including myself. And when you do that, you can really set yourself up for success next year. That leads me on to the second thing, which a lot of people also end up doing first, and that is visioning. After reflecting, it's really important to kind of envision where you see yourself in the future. A lot of people can forecast for about one year. I like to do it for about five years. Some people even do it for 10. And like, in my opinion, when I do it for 10, I just have no, I can't even like comprehend and fathom what my life would look like in 10 years. So I prefer to do it at around about five. But anyway, having an idea of where you wanna end up in one, two, five years can give you a really good sense of where you want to be heading. And it could also help you paint the picture as to what it is that you should be doing along the way, the habits that you should be cultivating so that you can become the vision that you envision. No wind is going to blow in favor of a ship without a destination. Now, the next thing after, you know, after you've done your reflection and after you kind of envisioned your vision is to plan on how you're gonna actually execute it. And so the way that I like to do this is I like to write down what my vision was, like where I see myself in five years and then work backwards from that. And the plan that I create is so that I know exactly what are the steps that I need to take in order to turn this vision into a reality for me. Now, obviously the actions that I'm going to write down is going to be based off the reflections and the visions that I've kind of created. And like here, it's very, very easy to kind of get caught up in the inspiration and the motivation of the goal. Because it's like, you know what? You see yourself here in like five, 10 years time and you get really caught up in the moment. You're like, yeah, you know what? Let's do this, let's do that. And like, it's all well and good. Right? But when we bring it down and when we break it down into the small little pieces that we want to, you know, that we want to kind of implement, the small little building blocks, the bricks that we want to put together in order to build this grand vision of ours, we need to make sure that we focus just on those bricks rather than kind of extending ourselves. Like there's that quote that always says like, oh, you know what, you shoot for the sun and then you'll end up among the stars or something. With this one, if you take that kind of mentality and you take it to like your everyday, you're gonna shoot for the sun and end up stuck in a tree because like that's, like you, you try to shoot too far and then you jumped and you're like, oh crap, you know what? It's just too challenging for me. It's too intimidating. The goal was like too big and there's, there's no way I can achieve it. Here's a quote from Bill Gates. Most people overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what they can do in 10 years. The building blocks that you should be setting yourself for the moment, all the short term little goals that you should be setting yourselves should be challenging. It shouldn't be intimidating. There was a study that was done in 2015 that found out that people performed at their best when they set themselves goals that were challenging enough for them to encourage high performance, but they were also at the same time low enough to be attainable. And like, that's the sweet spot. So when you come up with these building blocks, when you come up with the little things that you wanna do on the day, on the week, on the month, all right, I want you to find that sweet spot and make sure you kind of make the goal that you set yourself in those like those broken up little ones challenging. 
don't make it intimidating. It's like, it's all well and good if you're like, if your vision in five, 10 years time, whatever it is that you've envisioned is like really big and it's like, you know, inspiring and exciting, but it's all well and good if that is it. But I don't want you to kind of apply that same, you know, mentality to all the smaller ones. So keep that in mind when you're setting yourself your resolutions and your goals for next year. And the fourth thing to do, and I feel like it's one of the most exciting parts, is to ride that wave. Like it's exciting times. It's the end of the year, you know, the new year's coming about. So there's a lot of inspiration, a lot of motivation around. It's like, it's an awesome time to be alive and it's an awesome time to set new goals and new aspirations and think about the future and all that you could be. And so like ride that wave and encourage other people to ride it with you as well. And in saying that, to make that wave last longer, don't start Start January 1, right? Start now, as soon as you watch this video. Like there is no time to waste. The longer that you can make this wave, the better. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something to do with the stars or like, I don't know, your star sign. I, I, I don't know, but like whether you believe in that stuff or not. But I just feel like towards the end of the year and the very beginning of like, like a new year, it's like extremely fun. Like it's extremely fun, extremely motivating, extremely, extremely inspiring. Um, and so if you can ride that wave effectively, you can set in those good habits. You can cultivate all those different things that you wanna start implementing into your daily routine. And the reason why I say, you know, start it immediately is because by the time, you know, towards the end of January or like February, March ends up coming around, it's gonna get a lot more difficult for you to stay on track. And that's when we fall apart. I will hit the gym for like a month. We'll meditate for like a week or two, like how I did this year, right? We'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll like start very, like we'll start off really well, but then we won't carry it on for a long time. Like it's just, it, it's, it's just naturally what happens. That pool of motivation and that pool of inspiration ends up at some point running a little bit dry. And on that note as well, like, I mean, I've said this before in a previous video, but motivation is like a hot bath, right? Eventually that hot bath you get into, it's gonna get cold. And in order for you to, you know, obviously stay in that hot bath and draw a lot more like, you know, pleasure and comfort out of it, is you need to put more hot water in. And that leads me on to the fifth point, which is make sure you schedule monthly reviews. This is literally where you schedule in like a monthly review of your goals so you can get connected back to it. So you keep reminding yourself of what is it that you need to do and where is it that you wanna be? So you can continuously connect back to that. And then you can also readjust and make sure you're staying on track. Whether you need to readjust the goal, like some people believe like, you know, once you set a goal, like you gotta like stick to it. You don't. Like it might be that, you know what, you've set the needle too high or you set the bar too high and so you need to like drop it a little bit. Or it may be the fact that, you know what, you actually do tracking really well. Like you're actually doing way better, like way far ahead of what you actually set yourself to do. So you can actually probably push that bar just a little bit higher as well. Like you're allowed to readjust, but it's super important that you schedule these like moments, like these, like a day or like a morning, afternoon or night where you review your goals. For me, I'm gonna make it every Thursday night, not every Thursday night, but like every, first Thursday of every month, like the, in the evening, I'm gonna put that in my calendar and I'm gonna make sure that I schedule that time for me to review on my goals because then I can make sure I'm staying on track. If I know I'm not meeting something, I need to readjust something somewhere and I'm gonna end up doing that pretty much the Thursday of every month. Come join me on the journey if you want. If you want a more detailed video on goal setting and how you can set them really well so you can stay on track, check out this video over here. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Good luck, all the best. I wish you all the success, all the happiness for the rest of this year and into next year as well. And I'll definitely catch you in the next video. Bye.